Parmesan cheese, an essential ingredient in the things that we cook on this show and in Italian cooking. And I say parm, parmesan, parmigiano all the time, kind of interchangeably, but they are different and we need to talk about them. And I'm gonna show you how I cut it, how I grate it, and how I store it. In the store, you're gonna see things that look like this. They're gonna be called Parmesan, but they're not the real Parmesan. A lot of the wedges that you see in stores might be labeled Parmesan, but they're actually a US product. You might see a, the, those bottles of Kraft, the grated Parmesan Kraft cheese things. Even wedges that look like this may not be real Parmesan cheese. Parmesan cheese is the same thing with like the DOP that we've talked about with tomatoes and with balsamic vinegar to ensure that everyone who buys Parmigiano Reggiano, which is the real thing, is getting an artisanal product certified and guaranteed. And that is exactly what this stamp on the outside of Parmesan cheese means. When you see this stamp, that's the only way for you to determine whether it's the real thing or not. The name Parmigiano or Reggiano, like many things in Italian, is named after its birthplace. Emilia Romagna is this area sort of north of Tuscany in the northern part of Italy that is comprised of some of like the most amazing food destinations that you could visit. It's home to Parma, it's home to Bologna, Mo Modena, and in those some of those places is the birthplace of prosciutto di Parma, balsamic vinegar, and Parmigiano Reggiano. Started in Reggio Emilia and then transferred to Parma and Modena. So the name Parma from Parma and Reggio from Reggio Emilia, Parmigiano Reggiano. That is the only real Parmesan that exists. So to protect that authenticity, every producer who produces Parmigiano Reggiano is part of the Consorzio del Formaggio di Parmigiano Reggiano. Essentially just the Parmigiano Reggiano Cheese Consortium. This organization that basically inspects and certifies each wheel of cheese is coming from the correct place. There's basically three ages that it goes through, 12 month, 24 month, and 36 month. When the cheese gets made, they brand it Parmigiano Reggiano with like the age and the year and all that kind of stuff. And then it goes into this huge maturing room. And at that point, it's either gonna be aged for 12 months, aged for 24 months, or aged for 36 months. And at each stage, it dries out. There's these little crystals that if you look closely, you can see these little crystals inside and those are like kind of amino acid crystals they're called tyrosine crystals I think Parmesan has a lot of umami because it's like got salty it's sweet it's got this nutty kind of crunch to it and it's like the, um, the combination of all of those tastes and textures is what creates this deliciousness that is inherent in Parmesan cheese. So that's basically all you really need to know about Parmigiano Reggiano. I know depending on where you are in the country, it might be hard for you to find it, but there, with the internet now, it's always a thing and you can just kind of get a nice block delivered and you can know it's a legitimate product. And you really do need to get this to really taste the difference in Italian food. You can't really make a lot of these recipes without that real Parmesan. It, it really makes a difference. And we talk about the quality of ingredients because we're not using a lot of ingredients in some of these recipes. So having the real thing is essential. And so today what we're going to do is quickly just go through how I would cut this, both for a cheese board, obviously you could microplane it, but I'm gonna show you how I grate it for Parmesan so it's kind of powdery. And then I'm gonna show you how I'm, I would store it. So let's just jump right into it. So you wanna make a cheese board, right? And you want little chunks of Parmesan. Your inclination might be to take a knife and to cut little kind of squares or whatever, but that's not how you do it with Parmesan. Parmesan is created in such a way that there's like these crevices and these kind of textures and the aging process. And literally all you have to do is take like a knife or a cheese knife. This is just a vegetable peeler with a sharp end. And you can just stick it in and like that and twist. Stick it in, 
and twist and just sort of start to fleck off little pieces of Parmesan. And then on a cheese board, you can sort of lay them out and people can just take like a chunk of Parmesan with some cheese and whatever else is on and it's a nice way to serve it. And so whenever you want little chunks like this, remember, don't cut, flake off. I want to grate this for pasta. And sure, you could use a microplane and just sort of grate like that. But that gives a very delicate, almost really light dusting of Parmesan cheese. So if you really want that flavor, but you don't want it to really kind of hit, if you want a really mellow version, then you'd use the microplane. But I love Parmesan cheese and I want to taste it. I want to have like a little bite of it. And that's when that dust comes in handy. And there's a few ways to do it. You can use a box grater and you can use this, the diamond kind of shape or punch out. And this is going to create that little dusk that we like. See this? That's the perfect texture. See this, this powder? There's two reasons why your cacio pepe or your fettuccine alfredo or something like that is clumping up when you're making it. One, you're making it with Parmesan cheese that isn't real, or you're buying it pre-grated where most of these things have either cornstarch hidden in them, even high quality brands, they put cornstarch and cellulose in there to prevent from caking. Those things are going to clump in a pan. So the reason why you want to grate on your own is because you know this is pure cheese, you're grating it finer than a lot of these other people are grating it because you want it to melt away real easily. So this is the best way to do it. The problem is like, I could go ahead and do this for hours and it's hard, it takes a lot of time. If it's a low tech way to do it and it's a way that you can kind of always have it available, but I'm gonna show you the way that I do it, that's much quicker. But I will say, this is the better way to do it. So it's up to you. But for me, I'm trying to get things prepared. So when I do cook throughout the week, because I am busy, I don't have to worry and spend so much time grating it. I know it does degrade the cheese a little bit, but I'm going through like one of these a week. So there's not much time for me to worry about degradation. I'm flying through this cheese. So for me, it's not a problem. So as you can see, I have a food processor and a blender. That's the difference. The blender is actually a little bit more powerful than this guy. This guy, I can sort of control the size of the cuts a little bit better. So if I want them really diced up, but I don't want it to kind of be pureed, that's what I'm gonna use this guy with. This guy is gonna kind of really process something. So I'm gonna use this today to show you how I blend this, but you can also use a blender if you want. A food processor, I mean. So I just throw these guys in. And then we're just gonna process them to get them as fine as we possibly can. I really wanna get it fine, the finer the better. Thicker is gonna clump up a little bit. At the end of this, if you're making cacio pepe, you wanna make really sure that whatever cheese you use, I know you use pecorino and cacio pepe, but you could kinda process the grated cheese through this and you get a finer cheese at the end. That's sort of what restaurants do for a lot of these pastas. They'll blend the cheese and then run it through uh, a little mesh kind of strainer, you know, like you're kind of digging for gold and the really thin pieces are gonna fall out. The clumps are gonna stay in here and then you can just blend them up or use them for another purpose where the texture doesn't really matter so much. So you get these little clumps sometimes when you do this sometimes when the cheese has a little moisture in it. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll just like kind of dry it out because it's blended, it just needs to crumble. So then to store it, I would literally just put it in one of these quart containers. And then I've got parm, grated and ready to go. Then say I'm making cacio pepe or cheese that I'm gonna use for pasta. I may take this extra step and I'll just run the cheese through this little strainer So this is what you're left with. Just these kind of big balls. 
Then always save the rinds. You can throw them into soups, tomato sauces, stocks, whatever. Now again, I have half core containers and full core containers. I'll leave a link down below. I like to keep them in both, but always label this stuff. So in case you throw in like a different, say you got one that's pecorino and one that's Parmesan, you wanna kinda know which one's which. So I just have this scotch kinda colored tape. And I will go in and I'm gonna do that, but I gotta take that off because uh, I don't want that in my photo because like, my handwriting is embarrassing. So then we just store the cheese in quart containers. So there you have it. If I'm making pasta, I'm pretty much always going to desire it to be this consistency. Grated, doesn't do the same thing. That's like a little bit too much, having like those long kind of shreds. Uh, microplane is a little bit too mellow for me. This is always perfect. And if I want to mound it on there, I can mound it on there and it's gonna be amazing. If I want to kind of be light with it, I could be light with it, but still pick up that Parmesan flavor. Even in a salad, I like it this way. And remember, keep your rinds. If you want to store uh, some of these guys whole, cheese needs to breathe, but like only a little bit. So you don't want to keep it out in the air and you don't want to suffocate it. You could wrap it in parchment paper and just kind of like tape it, put it in the refrigerator. But like I said, I go through these pretty fast. I generally will just take a Ziploc bag, anything left over, cheeses like that will go in there. There's a little bit of air in there and you could even just kind of like crack it open ever so slightly. Then I'll just store some rinds in one of these things. And as I go through, I'll have uh, some rinds that I could put in whatever I need. So that's helpful. So I got my, my blocks. You might be asking what I would do with like this, the little beads that I filtered out. I will basically either like throw them in a salad, but like today I'm just gonna kind of throw them at the bottom. You know, you don't, you don't waste them, you still use them. So that's my Parmesan regimen. That's the information that I think you might need to understand about Parmesan. I th I'm worried a lot of people go out there, they buy whatever th they say is Parmesan, but in the sake of learning what is real, what is not, what we should be using, what we shouldn't be using, I thought this was an important topic to cover. So I hope you find value in that. Remember, we're not looking for Parmesan cheese, we're looking for Parmigiano Reggiano. I just got stacks and stacks of these things. They're fairly cheap. They are not single use, so I'm gonna use them forever. I mean, I'm not gonna have to buy these again for for a long, long time. And sometimes in the freezer they'll crack, but usually they're pretty good. So I keep a lot of them. I'll leave a link down to the two sizes I use below. Next episode, I got a friend coming over. He's keto, I guess. Keto, keto, whatever it is. So I'm gonna show him some nice Italian flavors to eat that isn't pasta, but you still get that vibe. Uh, so tune in for that. He's a very talented young man, so it'll be fun. Uh, that's all that I have today. Thanks to all my patrons who support me and who support the show. Thanks for everybody who watches. If you'd like to become a patron, there's a link down below. Uh, other than that, that's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.